this month in August we've got Venus moving into Gemini and we've got Mars moving into Aries amongst other things. Now if you're interested to see how this is going to impact you then please stick around. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the August Outlook. In this video we're going to take a look at what the stars are going to be like in the month of August which is coming up very soon. Uh, my goodness, I'm filming this on the 29th of July. I apologize, I'm a little bit late this time. had a lot going on. I've been busy doing readings which is a very good thing and very needed as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to check in with you guys about the month of August and what that's going to be like astrologically. I've been putting my notes together for this. Uh, I think I put them together yesterday and we're just going to dive straight in. I'm going to draw a diagram to begin. What I'm going to do is, as we do at the start, I'm not doing a news matchup as such. I'm really not watching a lot of news these days. There's kind of only very few things in the news at the moment anyway. Um, so what I am going to do though is I'm going to draw a diagram of what the stars are doing, what they're going to be doing. We're going to take a look at this in this way as opposed to, you know, I like to do the news matchup thing. That's what I've been doing all those months. I was doing that last year over a few months. I was quite enjoying matching up the news. Um, this time I think it's going to be good to just draw a diagram, show you what's going on. As I say, I'm not really uh, so in touch with the news. I was just watching a TED talk. I haven't finished it, but it's an interview with Bill Gates. I won't comment too much. <laughs> I don't have too much to say. Um, oh, I put that three a little bit too far down. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so this first bit is going to be me drawing a diagram. I apologize for that, but it's kind of nice, isn't it, to have some space in the day. That's kind of why I like doing the whole diagram thing. And the other reason I like doing the diagram thing is because students at MIT were asked, uh, they were surveyed about what they like in their lectures and they were asked, do you prefer PowerPoint slides or do you want chalk? And it's really interesting. The kids at MIT, the genius kids who are all about technology, they unanimously voted we like chalk. Something like 90 something percent of kids there love when the lecturer gets out a bit of chalk and, and starts drawing on the, on the chalkboard. Isn't that amazing? So, um, so that's one of the reasons I like doing these diagrams for you guys. Also, it's a pretty good way of seeing what's going on. Now for us, oh, and by the way, I tried to, I don't have a red jumper. So this is what it is. I've got pink. This is as close as I could get. And this is okay. Pink is good because Venus is making a bit of a move. Venus is going to move here in, so we've got Rahu, Venus. Venus is coming into Gemini. So I'll be talking you through that in your little mini reports, explaining what's happening there. This is nice for just about everybody. So that's good. Um, you know, on that Rahu Ketu axis kind of here. If I draw in Sagittarius, we're going to see, we've got Jupiter here in retrograde. We've got Pluto here in retrograde. Uh, and what else do we have? Yes, we've got Saturn here, also retrograde. And the really interesting thing for this month, I believe, this is the big news, this is the exciting news, and I'm going to title this video something to do with this movement. I'm going to call it Tension Rising or something like that because the big news is we've got Mars, he's going to do something very interesting. He's going to come into Aries, right? And then he's going to retrograde and then going to go forward, right? But this movement is what we're going to be focusing on for the um, mini readings. And it's the thing that I really want to talk about here today. So when does that happen? That happens on August 17th that Mars is in Pisces right now and makes on August 17th. 
steps into Aries, right? So, wow, you know, Mars is that power in us that wants to do things. It's, you know, the soldier, it's let's take over the world, let's, um, let's create, let's, let's get on with it, you know, and, and the, imagine the excitement of Mars going into Aries, right? Number one, being the leader, let's get it all done, let's make things happen. And you can see that Mars has been frustrated. Mars has been under the third aspect. Um, so if we count three places, one, two, three, so the third aspect of Saturn, right? So Mars has been frustrated, quite possibly, over these last you know, few weeks at least. Um, Mars has definitely been frustrated. You can imagine the excitement of Mars moving into Aries, the possibility of freedom of movement. I can get on with it. I can do things again. I can, but that's not so. Because Mars is going to make this movement, perhaps feel a little bit of relief, maybe around the August 17th. But I do believe that uh, there's going to be a really hard square. I'm going to use that square Western astrology terminology there because it is very good. In order to describe this, Mars is going to be here and that's going to be August, August 23rd, 24th, 25th. On these dates, Mars is going to be pretty much exactly square Saturn. So what does that mean? How, what is that energy going to feel like? How is that going to manifest? I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about a few analogies that could represent this. There could be, I, mean, I guess I'm going to call it tension. Perhaps Mars has been frustrated here, not being able to get on with it. And there'll be a sort of hard aspect here and tension. And you could see it as... I thought about the concept of a pressure cooker, um, that kind of energy. I also thought about the concept of like, say for example, turning a screw, right? Like, you know, you, you're turning a screw, you're trying to get movement, but there's a, a very hard limit. Saturn's imposing a sort of hard limit, making things very difficult. And I think that term, turning a screw, they use that for negotiations, don't they? like one party trying to, you know, really tighten things. And yeah, that, that's the kind of thing I've been thinking about here. So I think August 23, 24, 25, these dates are going to be really interesting to watch. This squaring effect will happen again in January of next year. I don't like that one as much. This one I don't like. I, I'll tell you, I don't like these dates. But the one that happens in January, is a, I find that a bit scary or I really don't like it. And the reason I really don't like it is because Jupiter will be up here uh, with Saturn. And I suspect that's not going to be a good time. Because at least right now we've got Jupiter here in Sagittarius. The other thing is that Jupiter, when Mars moves here, uh, yes, Jupiter will be throwing aspect onto Mars. So that's where this pressure cooker thing or this tension that's rising, that's hitting limits or whatever, like that's going to be expanded, I think, by Jupiter. So I, I really feel like this, these dates could be very tense. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I'm seeing for this month. I'm pretty sure that was it that was all i had to say for the intro today just checking my notes got my laptop in front of me and yeah i think we can get stuck into the mini readings now how are we doing for time oh that's not too bad good um the mini readings what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at rahu and venus for everybody venus is joining rahu venus is going to be on that line hopefully giving us some good energy and we'll be giving nine signs out of 12, some good energy. Three signs aren't going to get such great energy. Um, and then we've got Mars movement is going to be good for three signs in particular. So stick around for those mini readings to see if you've got some good energy coming your way. Because 
Honestly, if you have been feeling tired, if you've been feeling run down, if you've been feeling any of those things, please know that that's normal and I think healthy um, because, you know, sensitive souls at this time are going to be feeling the strangeness of the collective. And it's not like if you don't feel that you're not sensitive. That's not true either. I have a really good friend of mine. Um, you know, she's an INFJ as per Maya Briggs, right? One of the most sensitive types. And she's a really, really wonderful person. But you know what? She doesn't think there's much going on. She's just like, let's have a party. Let's get friends together. There's, you know, there's a whole, I don't feel very social. And I'm kind, I'm kind of in touch with the strangeness. And I haven't seen her chart because she doesn't want to know the future. <laughs> but um, it's really interesting because I would suspect she wouldn't have too much collective energy. And, and I, I've got a bit of a theory at the moment that if you've got um, definitely Aquarius energy in your chart, quite strongly represented, 11th house, I'm kind of thinking about that, Capricorn as well, um, you'll really be feeling, feeling it and you'll be feeling that things aren't, aren't normal. And if that's you, I, you know, I, I, I totally relate to that. And, but we need people like my friend who, who just are not feeling it at all and who, you know, her life is completely as normal as though nothing really that big happened um, for her because she works from home anyway and, um, you know, it's really very interesting. So, yeah, I, that's one of the things I've been enjoying contemplating at this time, the different experiences of different people, you know, how real this is for some people uh, how unreal it is. So fascinating. So, so fascinating. All right. So let's get into these mini reports, shall we? Aries moon. Welcome Aries moon. I'm so glad that you joined me. Let's take a look at what's happening in your chart for this month. So we've got the 1st of August. Venus is moving to be third from your moon. Okay. So this is very nice. Uh, great transit, great for meeting new people, great for exchanging ideas, great time to boost your profile. Okay, that third house is image as well. It's how you present yourself to the world. Um, it's teamwork, it's company type stuff, yeah, promotions are possible here, all that kind of thing. So I, when I say boost your profile, that might mean you know, you're updating your portfolio website or your LinkedIn profile or whatever that is. That could be a really good thing to do this month. Uh, now let's combine this with Mars moving into your first house on the 17th. So you, you may want to initiate a new project, you may want to start something new and it is a good time for that. Um, you might want to reinvent yourself as well. It could be reinventing your entire self, it could be um, you want to change your image you know, you want to do something major like that, even your appearance or something like that, like go for a radical new haircut, I don't know. But um, I've got the note here, good time for it, but don't force it if you feel Saturn's square position and that square position, that strong square that I talked about in the intro, that is going to be felt kind of later in the month. So if you just get a sense that... Um, this new project you want to start or, or the new thing that you want to do. Do what you can, but don't push it, okay? You're, you're not one of the people with the lucky Mars energy this time, right? But you've got good Venus energy, so tap into all things Venusian. Enjoy that, and I'll see you next time, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for watching. All right, we're now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 1st of August, Venus is moving into your second house from the moon. Uh, this is great. This is really nice. And I've got the note here. She's coming along to bring cheer to family life. Oh, my goodness. God. Goodness knows you need it sometimes, Taurus. Moon, isn't that? You know, you're stable, but uh, I imagine that, you know, family life can get tense sometimes too. So this is good. This is nice energy, especially in regards to family some uplift with family or people close to you. So that's something to look out for there. 
Uh, now this combined with the Mars energy moving into your 12th house from the moon. Okay, this might make you feel a little bit restless spiritually. That's one of the things I find when Mars is in that 12th house. You know, and this is the kind of workshop junkie or the person who keeps trying new things or whatever. But that's great, right? I've been that. I, I love that. I don't even have Mars in the 12th house or any of that. But um, that's what this placement is famous for. And you might... Well, okay, well, on the one point, this may stimulate a desire for escapism, right? Great. If you can do that, if you can carve time out, if you can do your own thing, that'd be wonderful. Um, the, the other thing is, this is a good time to pick up new things. This is a good time to pick up new spiritual teachers or get involved in that kind of thing. Um, I've got a note here, great time for spiritual or intellectual learnings of any kind. Watch some Matthias Stefano, for example. So who is this Matthias Stefano? I, oh God, I hope I got his name right. This guy's awesome. I've been watching his stuff lately and I actually want to watch, um, he's got this series out on Gaia and I can't wait to watch that. He seems really cool. So that's a new spiritual teacher I've found that you know perhaps um, you might feel inspired to pick up the works of someone new. So Taurus Moon, I'm wishing you well for this month. If at any stage you're feeling a bit tired, Mars can be a bit draining in that 12th house, might make deep sleep a, a bit difficult or lighter than normal. Don't worry too much, just, um, just try to take time out when you can. And if you're an introvert like me and you feel like declining social offers, you can certainly do that. <laughs> All right, Taurus Moon. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 1st of August, Venus moves to be first from your moon. Okay, this is very interesting. This is a great time to work on your health, on your beauty routines. Um, you know, this is a time to look good and to feel good and enjoy that Venusian energy you know, maybe some pampering is in order maybe you've been doing too much maybe you need a spa day um, don't feel afraid to take one or don't feel like you shouldn't take one take it uh, let's have a look here mars moves into your 11th house on the 17th of august oh well hello this is wonderful yes september 10 he goes retrograde okay you've got you're one of the lucky ones you've got mars going to be in a great spot for you until really, I mean, September 10, he goes retrograde. That's not too bad. Until really October 4, this is a long time. So this is a great energy to build your network, okay? Professional network circle. This is the time to network. Get the business card out. Add the people on LinkedIn. Do all of that. This is a great time for that. Um, this could be a really good time to initiate new projects. So, and definitely don't put off the spa day. You're going to need that too. Uh, Mars in the you know eleventh um, house could could bring in more money and that kind of thing. So this is great, um, but this is this is really good energy to initiate new projects, um, to do things. And look, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This this may be frustrated by Saturn. Okay, you've got a square there with Saturn. None of us are out of Saturn's grasp um, this year. It, it's it's this next two point five years. I mean, for the whole Saturn transit in Capricorn. Um, so we've, yeah, you know, you you might as you're initiating these new projects and doing these new things. You, yes, you might come up against that Saturnian square energy or that Saturnian thing. Um, but your Mars is good, and there there is some good natural energy there for you. So. Try to use it, try to make use of it, but don't push it. If you are tired, if you are, and that, that, that's because of the collective being in the way that it's in, some of us just aren't gonna have energy and that's okay, right? Know that, that's, know that rest is as important as doing things, but you've got the energy to do things. So Gemini Moon, I wish you well with that beautiful energy and we are now gonna welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now let's take a look at your, your outlook for this month. So on the 1st of August, we've got Venus moving to be 12th from your moon. Okay, this is really lovely energy. This is nice. This is a great time to indulge in spiritual teachings uh, or some form of escapism. 
right? And there's a nice energy there for you to do that. Mars moves to be 10th from your moon. So, and that's happening on the 17th of August. Pretty sure I've got that right, yep. So this, this will give you energy to start work projects, initiate some new cycle with regards to your career, but you may find delays or frustration. And what I would say here is um, be careful with your superiors or your seniors. You know, there is energy there to initiate new things in regards to work. If you're on your own business, perfect then I would say go for it because you're the boss, you're in charge. So use the energy. And this could be good um, to be building up your professional network circle and, and things like that. A little bit like Gemini Moon, they've got that similar thing going on. But Cancer Moon, I think for you, it's kind of, it's a bit more about initiating new projects, initiating that next level of your career, right? Somehow stepping things up, somehow doing more, adding another thing to what you do, or um, could even, but you could even manifest it in terms of learning as well, learning that next thing or that next rung up. Um, it could be networking as well. But what I wanna say here is this is not the best energy for Mars. Mars really loves being in the 11th house, doesn't like being in the 10th so much. And I think that could be because of authority figures, superiors, all that kind of thing, and coming up against um, limitations. And the interesting thing here is that, as I say, use that Mars energy to work on your career, to get things going, but you may come upon um, opposition from Saturn because Mars is going to square Saturn so yes, there is energy there for you, but there could be delays, there could be stalling effect, there could be a spanner in the works. There is that to contend with. But I, I always think it's worth a shot anyway, you know, and it depends on your particular chart and all that kind of thing. Uh, that's because your ascendant might be different, right? And as with any of these reports I do, you can always watch your ascendant as well. Watch from your sun too, if you wanted to. Um, let's have a look here. Good thing Venus is in the 12th. Yeah, that is nice energy for you. I mean, that's lovely. And as Lord of your fourth house and with, with Mars opposition. Yeah, I mean, this could be a nice time to spruce up your home, right? That's how you might want to use the in energy instead. You might want to, um, I don't know, just do something to change your place, make your home a bit more dreamlike or escape-like, you know, if there's a place you love escaping to. Um, I know for me, I used to love escaping to uh, Cafe Nero in London. I used to love the dark wood and the coffee and the, you know, I love the dark wood. So, you know, if I was in your shoes and I had this kind of energy, yeah, I would look at, okay, how can I make my place more like my little getaway, favorite getaway cafe? Uh, that's just an idea of something to do. But Cancer Moon, I wish you well. As with all signs, if you are feeling a bit tired um, and Mars in your 10th, yeah, I mean, that could be a little bit draining. It could be taxing at times. Don't feel guilty or bad that you need to rest or take time out or do less. Um, that's really important, okay? That's a big message that I have for everybody. Uh, this is a good time to rest and go within with your Venus. You, you've definitely got energy supporting that. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 1st of August, we've got Venus moving to be 11th from your moon. This is beautiful energy. This is really, really nice. Uh, great time to socialize if you can. I mean, you know, and it's, that's frustrating. I actually had some of the best transits over these last few months was socializing and meeting people and you know and I haven't done a thing right so it's hilarious isn't it sometimes you can have these wonderful transits that are great for things like socializing but I mean we're not really in that kind of mode are we um, but you do have some nice energy here for that 
Um, and I've got a note here, I mean, you could be boosting your social media profile, uh, doing a LinkedIn update or something like that, maybe networking a bit more, reaching out to people a bit more, checking in on people even if you feel inspired to do so. Um, Mars will be ninth from your moon later in the month, so that's kind of 17th August onwards, and then we mean we can have that square um, of Mars with Saturn, so that could be a bit tense. But for you, this is not bad energy, right? You could be using your intellect. Um, you could be learning something new in terms of your profession. You could be going that next level up. You could be networking with the right kind of people, reaching out to people. A good time to get a mentor, good time to be training under somebody or um, learning, learning a new system even or learning something that's going to really help you in your work sphere. Uh, I've got a note here, don't have any crosswords with your superiors at work. Be careful. Okay, be careful with um, how you speak to your superiors. Maybe avoid them, I don't know, <laughs> um, if you can. You don't have to avoid them. I think it'll be all right. You've got nice Venusian energy there, so you've got some lovely stuff happening here. Uh, good time to learn up about your competition. Saturn in the sixth house. Yeah, this was interesting because I looked at the Saturn placement to have a look at how these work with Saturn. And the interesting thing here is, yeah, good time to learn up about your competition. As I was saying, use your intellect. This could be a good time to be using the mind, read up on what your competition is doing. And that's always a good activity. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good to see what others do because then you can be inspired maybe by what they do. You can incorporate some of their ideas in, into work you're doing. Um, so some nice energy here for you, Leo Moon. Uh, as with all signs, if you are feeling tired or exhausted or... Um, you know, don't be afraid to slow things down. Saturn is putting the brakes on everything and everyone across the board big time. So that really is still the dominant energy. Um, the, while there is some nice Mars energy here, you know, we're still going to be coming up against delays and frustration along the way. So um, Leo Moon, take care of yourself. Uh, rest when you need to. And we're now going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 1st of August, Venus moves to be 10th from your moon. Right, so you are not one of the lucky ones when it comes to Venus. Um, Venus doesn't like to be in the 10th so much. It's not a bad placement. You know, it can be good. But I've, I've got a note here, like sort of lay low career-wise this month. Uh, let's have a look what else we've got here for you. Mars in the 8th with Saturn in the fifth may well this is interesting this is not career related at all okay and this is quite cool um it you know there, there may be some spare energy or time to learn some new occult thing right um and i've got the note here if you've never bought a tarot deck now could be the time to dabble i'm getting into tarot a little bit i think it's so much fun and who knows maybe that might be something that you would like to do or I don't know what other occult things are there. I'm kind of seeing a physicality to this with Saturn in the fifth. I don't know, learning about crystals or something or well, whatever it is. This could be a good time for that. This could also be this could also be actually a bit of a time to stock take money wise. Um, yeah, next month, I've got to note here, next month, Venus is good for you, for sure. Venus is going to be moving into better places. This could be a really nice time just to take stock, stock of your finances um, and, and how you're working financially and just kind of a time to get organized. That is really something that you could be doing. Um, this could be nice energy for that. So... Or as I say, this could be an excuse to let your inner child have some fun and, and buy a, an oracle deck or something crazy like that. I don't know. <laughs> but um, it's not bad energy. It, it's, you, you're not one of the lucky signs that's getting great energy. You've kind of got, you know, a bit of, a bit of maintaining status quo type energy here. So um, Virgo Moon, 
One thing I am saying to all signs across the board is that if you're feeling tired at any time, and especially for you um, with Mars the way it is, and you know some of your placements, if you feel tired, if you want time out, if you want to go slow, now's the time to do that. And it's a great time to you know, learn the true art of rest. That's something I'm trying to do because I love working. I love doing things and I do find it hard to rest. But um, I'm, I'm discovering the joys of resting and, and not doing work. And sometimes it's very necessary for our health. So Virgo Moon, I wish you well. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now on the 1st of August, move, Venus moves to be ninth from your moon. And this is really nice, kind of brightening up that Rahu Ketu axis there. Uh, this might get you dreaming about traveling, which I realize is not ideal at the current time. Um, but you know, you can be clocking up places you'd like to visit. I've certainly been doing that. I've been um, on my YouTube, there are these luxury hotel things that keep popping up on my dashboard and I kind of click into them and I go, oh wow, love to go there one day. Um, but I, I don't see that happening for me anytime soon. But now for you, you might be dreaming of traveling. Uh, you might have to travel. It is possible at this time if you have to. Um, but what I've got here, the note is that this is a great energy to be learning from spiritual masters. People like Ram Dass, you know, who had his Venus in the ninth house. If you're unfamiliar with the teachings of Ram Dass, please do check him out. I intend to create a master's video on him. It's on my list of to-dos, so stay tuned for that. But I mean, you can be checking out his lectures um, in your spare time, you know, that, that'd be a really good thing to do this month. Mars leaves, oh, I see, yes. So you've had a lovely, um, brilliant uh, placement here with Mars being in your sixth house. Very nice. But on 17th of August, he's going to be in your seventh house. So there's going to be a, a shift of energy for you, okay? Mid-August, 17th August, and then be careful of tension 23rd, 24th, 25th, right? There's going to be a shift of energy for you, and I've got the note here. Watch how you speak to partners. Watch how you speak to, you know, business partners, marriage partner, any of that. Go slow in business, marriage, and at home. The other thing is accept delays, all right? And a delay might be a God-given gift, giving you time to rest and recharge your body, and you may need that Libra moon. So um, do take advantage of any time out that you get. Go easy on yourself, don't push it this month. Um, relax if you feel the need. So Libra moon, thank you so much for watching. We're now gonna welcome Scorpio moon. Scorpio moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 1st of August, Venus moves to be 8th from your moon. So this is great energy for time with in-laws. Um, this could be good, nice family energy here, right? Or it could be bringing the focus to your family in order to resolve certain things or sort things out. Um, Mars moves to be 6th from your moon, 17th August. Oh, this is very good. Scorpio moon, I have good news for you. You're one of the lucky ones. You've got a good transit here with Mars. Um, this is great energy to boost your career, to take on the competition or to study up the competition if that's something you need to do. Um, take on more clients. There's a lot of good ways this could manifest great. If you've got any legal things that need to be sorted out, you could find some progress there. Um, now, Saturn is third from your moon, which on the one hand wants to give you opportunities, and we love Saturn being third from the moon. Um, but he could be taking the edge off your courage or dampening your courage a little bit. Um, could be preventing you from being hands-on. So what I'm going to say goes against the grain of what I've been saying for many of the other signs. For you, I'm going to say tune into your Mars energy and go for it, right? If you feel that I can do this, I can take this on, or I can create this new thing, or I, you know, if you're feeling it and you feel like you, you, know, you want to um, really do something, then then go for it, Scorpio Moon. I think now is the time. Uh, as always, though, we do have this kind of effect happening. We've got sort of Mars wanting to go for it and then Saturn being the delay and the square and all this kind of thing. Don't force anything, right? But try, do, 
see what see what you can do with this lovely Mars energy that's that's come in for you and it's going to last until October so it's a really nice long transit for you all right we're going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 1st of August Venus moves to be seventh from your moon I'm just going to check the time we're good I don't need to swap my card out or any of that um, 1st of August Venus moves to be seventh from your moon so yeah this is not the best uh, Venus transit um, you might want to take time out from business partnerships uh, or you know just um, if there are contentious things you have to deal with in your marriage maybe don't raise those things at this time um, maybe you know take your foot off the accelerator in your relationships basically uh, for you Mars moves to be fifth from your moon yeah again avoid harsh words with your romantic partner so if you're in a new partnership blossoming romance any of that um, your boyfriend girlfriend set up and yeah just uh, you know this, this could this time could be prone to arguments basically I've got the note here in invest any spare energy you have in your creativity creative projects that require your attention alone okay so if you're on your own perfect um, this is a really good time to get on and be creative and do lots in that regard so projects where you have to work on your own are absolutely brilliant for you at this time Sagittarius moon so this could be a very creative time for you and uh, as always as with any sign that I'm talking to in this set I'm saying if you feel tired if you feel run down you want a bit of time out please take the time out don't feel guilty about it this is a tough time we've got tough energies going on it's just it's gonna start cranking up um, we're gonna see a lot more tension I think September October and, and definitely November so Sagittarius moon I wish you well and we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 1st of August Venus moves to be six from your moon uh, you are yeah see this is the thing you're coming off a really great run with Venus you've had a great time Venus has been consistently providing you a lot of beautiful energy now for quite a while and I'm going to tell you Venus is not going to be happy for the next couple of months okay so this could be tension to do with your relationship if you're in a romance boyfriend girlfriend situation husband wife any of that um, you know things could be a bit argument prone for a little while for you so just just be gonna take a bit of time out walk the dog um, all of that it's just for a couple of months and you'll find the energy will improve and things will get better okay um, Mars moves to be fourth from your moon uh, I've got the note here you may feel like starting home related projects home renovation projects I mean look do what you can but if you feel blocked or delayed right that's Saturn um, and uh, I've got the note here just graciously accept the delays so you know I mean one of the things that we're all learning this year is patience and acceptance of where we are wherever we are right these are big spiritual learnings and we're all knee deep in that so Capricorn moon I have full confidence that you are going to do the best with whatever energies are presented being presented to you um, you know in this month of uh, of August it's, it's not the easiest month there are better months coming for you but I, I have full faith and trust in you that you're gonna you're gonna come out of this better than how you started right that's always the goal isn't it so um, and the other thing is I'm saying this to every single sign if you feel tired if you feel like you need some time out please take some time out don't feel guilty um, you know for being human quite frankly because it's a bit of a tough time on the planet right now all right so thank you Capricorn moon we are now going to welcome Aquarius moon I'm just taking the time we're good we can do this Aquarius moon uh, on the 1st of August Venus moves to be fifth from your moon oh this is great this is nice energy I'm so glad to report this it's good for romance creativity time out with children uh, mid-month okay you are one of the lucky ones yes Aquarius moon I'm so happy for you Mars moves to be third from your moon all right so you're gonna have some increased energy courage um, energy to socialize within any rules of course that are in your area um, good time to up your profile brush up your LinkedIn profile all that kind of thing get more social get more out there if you want a promotion if you want to be seen if you want to you know launch a new project 
um, take things up a notch, right? You want to, you know, start a new social media stream or whatever it is. This is a very good time for that. Um, get yourself out there. Go for a promotion, right? Saturn may delay you, okay? We've got thick, heavy Saturn energy for everybody across the board this entire year, this, this entire transit of Saturn in Capricorn. But um, I've got the note here, just graciously accept any delays or frustrations. It's, it's, it's minor. You've got Mars power. Use it. Okay, so Aquarius Moon, I'm very happy for you. And um, I'm just gonna, I'm just checking the time. I don't wanna get knocked off here. I'll just very quickly tell you, I've been telling all signs, with the square happening between Mars and Saturn, if you feel tired, if you feel, you know, especially around that 23rd, 24th, 25th, anywhere there, if you feel tired, if you feel drained, take time out, recharge your batteries. Don't feel guilty. This is a tough time for everyone in the world. So, um, I wish you well, Aquarius Moon. All right, we're now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 1st of August, Venus moves to be fourth from your moon. So this is beautiful energy at home. If you feel inspired to make your home more beautiful, this is the time to do it, all right? This is nice energy for that. Um, and it could be just simple things. It could be, you know, I, I've got this chair in the background. You can see that chair there. And one of the my DIY home projects I have is I'm going to buy a golden cushion and that's it and you know I'm going to shop for hours until I find it but <laughs> I don't have money for big renovation projects but sometimes just buying a new cushion or a new mug is all that it takes right so um, yeah let's have a look at Mars. Mars will move to be second from your moon okay so that's probably why I was saying you can make your home more beautiful as well yeah but I've got the note here be, be careful how you speak to family members all right, this could be a time where things get a little bit argument prone with family members. So just, um, you know, walk the dog, take time out, do what you have to do. Go cushion shopping. I don't know. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, I've got the note here. Great time and great energy to improve the home. Just be careful in interactions with family and friends. Be mindful to be sensitive to them, which of course you would be Pisces moon. I have no doubt about that. Um, but... Let's have a look for time. This is going to cut out in like 30 seconds. So I'm going to wish you the best, Pisces Moon. And for anyone who's stuck around and watched this whole thing, my hat is off to you. Well done. Um, I wish you the best. I wish everyone the best. And please subscribe. Please, you know, like and comment and do all those wonderful things. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.